I'm very happy to have on the phone with me a man who I am just so excited to talk with. Michael Burbank is in charge of Menlaw. And now I kind of found out about Menlaw through Tibet House. Um, now, being here in Hawaii, I've never had a chance to go to Tibet House in New York. However, I have called there and talked to them, and I've it's got an amazing story, and it's it's kind of legendary in New York, actually. Tibet House is very famous, isn't it? Yes, uh, yes, we've made a, a small dent in a, uh, in a very important cause, and uh, we turn 35, I believe, next year. Wow, isn't that amazing? Wow. I know. And think of and all Menla the... turns 20. And all <laughs> the wonderful people that have had a chance to talk there and sit there and go through there. Um, I I really at one point thought we were going to try to get there and, and rent it out because there was a film um, with His Holiness the Dalai Lama that I was working with someone on, and it just didn't quite work out, of course, because COVID and everything else changed a lot of plans. But mm-hmm. I, I'm so glad I got on the uh, mailing list, and, and it was through that that I found out about this other side that I had never heard of before, which is Menla which is set in the uh, secluded valley beside an enchanting stream in the heart of the Catskill Mountains. Doesn't that sound wonderful? How did Menla get start, Michael? Uh, Sure. So Menla, uh, which is a 330-acre mountain valley in uh, in just about the center of the Catskills, was a gift for $1 to Tibet House (gasps) in 2001. Wow. And... um, that was a rather expensive gift because it's a massive property with 21 buildings, and it's a lot to uh, to maintain, let alone improve. Um, and uh, we will be uh, turning 20, as I said, next year. Um, the uh, The idea behind it was that Robert Thurman, our our president and co-founder of Tibet House, um, had been told and, and made to study Tibetan medicine in his youth by his root lama. Mm. And he just wanted to study philosophy and meditate, but he was instructed to, to study Tibetan medicine and that he would need it later in life. And it became, um, you know, became known among uh, Bob's uh, friends that he was looking for a center to be able to start to offer uh, programs around the Tibetan arts of uh, art and science of healing. And a mutual friend of the a very wealthy woman who had purchased this property before um, introduced us because her enterprise ended up not happening. She was inspired to start a healing center here by a visionary healer uh, person at the end of the, 20, uh, the 20th century. And um, and they, for various reasons, weren't able to move forward. And when she heard that Bob Thurman was looking for a place uh, to help introduce Tibetan medicine and the Tibetan healing arts and sciences to the West, she sort of knew right away she wanted to gift the place to Tibet House. And then it took about a year for us to be evaluated and for the uh, deed to be signed over to us. So that's how we acquired it. And uh, Tibet House in the U.S. in New York City by Union Square um, is a a nonprofit that the Dalai Lama asked uh, Bob Thurman and Philip Glass, our vice president, and um, Richard Gere and a few others to start in the the 1980s as a means of preserving and promoting Tibetan culture in exile because, of course, Tibetans have been undergoing a very concerted ethnogenocide for almost 80 years now, and um, they have a lot of trouble communicating what happened in Tibet uh, because of Chinese propaganda and Chinese pressures on, um, on other countries and organizations not to acknowledge Tibet. So um, our P- Menla's piece in this is really to focus on the healing arts and sciences, and Tibetan medicine is a thousand plus year old uh, tradition that is a blend of ancient Greek healing, um, Chinese herbalism, Ayurveda, and indigenous uh, medical lore from you know from long long time back in Tibet and the Himalayas. So it's a it's an ancient and very vast system that is 
essentially unknown in the West and certainly in the United States. Um, and we have an opportunity akin to folks introducing the West to Ayurveda maybe 100 years ago in that, um, you know, we're really just looking to open the door for people and, and communicate that there is this rich, incredible, holistic tradition that uh, they can explore. And Tibetan doctors are famous for their the accuracy of their diagnoses, and they're, they have especially good results with uh, mystery illnesses and things that Western doctors um, tend to be stumped by. So... It's really an exciting time, uh, in, in my mind, in the West, um, as you know, we we start to really try to integrate functional medicine, holistic medicine, into our own uh, system, and uh, work in complementary ways. So we're here as sort of a bridge in that respect. Well, when you think of what's happened since Tibet House began, and then when you think of what's happened in just the twenty years since Menla began, um, this explosion of people's interest in meditation, in uh, these sure. arts has just, I mean, I don't think anyone could have predicted how it would have grown um, and continues to grow. So it must have been a very interesting evolution. When you build anything, you're kind of, uh, you can set a structure and then other something else takes over, you know, the people, mm-hmm. the ideas. And, and it must have been amazing to see the um, tr- the transformation of this um, beautiful, beautiful land into what is now um, a very needed resource. How have you seen the change? Or I don't know how long. How long have you been there? Well, I've actually been here since the very beginning. Wow! Um, I was a student of Bob's in college as an undergraduate, and. Uh, was obsessed with Buddhism and took all of Bob's classes and had a million questions. And actually, the year that I graduated, he was offered Menla, and he invited me to come up and wow. help him clean it up and paint and get it going. So I've been here almost, it would be 20 years in March. <laughs> so, so when you began, um, what did you imagine, um, and, and how was that different from what happened? Well, um, I was quite young. I was 24 and very idealistic and optimistic and um, felt uh, a a strong spirit, a pioneering spirit of really setting about to start something meaningful for people to come and learn more about themselves, learn about the nature of reality, learn how to be happy and healthy. And so I, um, in the initial days, there was so much work to do just to get the place kind of ready um, I didn't think sort of long term, but I knew that we were embarking on something that um, was badly needed in our sick culture, which I, I consider American culture to be very sick um, and, um, and in need of human centered solutions. And uh, so we're, you know, we've, we've changed a lot. I mean, we, we now offer many of our own programs. We the one building that we built from scratch is our, our spa, which is not a place where you go to get your nails done, but it's more a healing spa for really deep kind of transformative body work. Um, and we've uh, been uh, partnering with people over the years and certainly many great teachers. And um, now because of COVID, we had the blessing of being forced into the digital age and um, we're finding that we're working with teachers that we may not have had the resources to work with before because of the expense of flying people and people's schedules and everything, and we're reaching more people. Mm-hmm. So um, we continue to look toward the future and ways in which we can, uh, we can grow, but the, the real heart of it is the experiences that people have when they come here for a retreat or a personal getaway and they derive so much just from the, the land itself and the energy of the, of the valley, uh, the clean water. We have some of the cleanest water in the, in the world. Wow. And organic food that we grow ourselves, clean air, and uh, sort of this feeling of being immersed in the forest while having the creature comforts that we're all sort of used to. Of course, everyone loves to get out and walk and do yoga, and you have a lot of hiking trails that look fascinating. I know if I was there, and I have to get there sometime, 
Um, you know, I'd be hiking every day. Um, do you allow people just to hike on their own, or are they led through yes. hikes? You, they can. That's wonderful. Yeah, we advise people not to go on their own um, in case they get injured. It is yeah. you know, kind of rocky throughout the Catskills. Yeah. But I, if I could legislate, you know, a requirement for people to have to be in the woods, I would. But, of course, I can't <laughs> uh, because it really, the, the experience speaks for itself. And um, it complements the sort of inner teachings that most uh, groups and certainly are, that we seek to transmit in our own retreats that are more intellectual and, and helping to clear away misunderstandings and um, give people sort of inner tools for dealing with problems. But just getting out in the woods and being quiet and listening and appreciating the wind and the trees and the various animals that all coexist peacefully here is just totally powerful and transformative. And, you know, it's so interesting when we see also how yoga in the 20 years since you've been there um, how unbelievably po- popular yoga has become. So I'm sure you had you Amazing. moved with that. <laughs> you moved with that in time. Um, are you know? I imagine you have a lot of teachers. Do some of the yoga teachers live there because you have so many yoga classes? Uh, we do have um, yoga teachers on staff from time to time. Um, you know, most of the retreats that come through here nowadays are yoga studios uh, in terms of the retreats that rent mm. space from us rather uh-huh. than our own. Uh, sponsorships and um you know it's every brand of yoga you could possibly imagine um and uh you know the yoga is actually the and and robert thurman has been um at, at the forefront of trying to articulate this that yoga and buddhism go hand in hand they're not two separate traditions and the especially in the indo-tibetan Buddhist tradition, which is very well preserved thanks to the obsessive efforts of Tibetans over the centuries. Um, there's a whole system of many different kinds of yogas, and, and meditation and inner yoga is part of that. So um, yoga has been sort of transmitted in the West as something separate from Buddhism, mm-hmm. and we're trying to correct that understanding. And you can see the Buddha's influence in Patanjali's Yoga Sutra, for example. Mm-hmm. So um, we have started a series of teacher trainings and general trainings that we call Vajra Yoga, which um, attempts to bridge the divide in people's awareness of how closely intertwined the various yogic traditions are with the Buddha's teachings and influence throughout Asia and the world. Well, thank you for that, because, you know, I, I've done yoga, you know, for many, many, many years, and I've seen, since I started it, I mean, all these people kind of do, well, just like any kind of meditation. You see many forms of meditation now as well. But right. a lot of people have gotten, and I see these people that want to do this rather aerobic forms of yoga. Uh-huh. And I'm going, well, that doesn't feel very meditative or very, you know, and it's like, I, I, I like the yoga where I can really get con- connected inside and do a meditative yoga. And it's good to know that you're doing that because I sometimes get frustrated when I see so many yoga classes that people just do to get in shape, you know. Um, but but there is a lot to it. And, and you know, speaking of these this, I mean, and I'm glad you brought it up. People can um, actually rent out. Do they rent out the room, or do they rent out a, a certain space, or if they have a group yeah. they want to bring? How does that work? Uh, well, we have um, five or six different meeting spaces of various sizes, and we have about a, uh, 60 guest rooms. Wow. Uh, with a, approximately 100 beds uh, spread across those 60 rooms. So um, we will um, rent out space to like-minded organizations who want to do some kind of spiritual or wellness retreat, and we feed them with, uh, you know, our own organically grown, uh, mostly vegan food that our chef lovingly prepares, and they're very delicious meals, and we take care of their housekeeping, and we have front desk service, and we really kind of hold a space for them to really feel comfortable and safe uh, and not judged, and our staff is very caring. Uh, so they would just call us up or actually go on our website and um, click on the link to apply to bring their group here, and we try to fit them all in. Well, I should mention it a few times because um, it's quite a wonderful uh, website, by the way. Menla is M-E-N-L-A dot org. What does Menla mean? Menla is the Tibetan name of the medicine Buddha. Ah. So it's the aspect of Buddha that 
is, is healing. And we chose the name Menla in part because we're a Tibet-focused organization, but also because the original Sanskrit name is by Shaja Guru, which is just a bit of too much of a mouthful for people. <laughs> so <laughs> the two-syllable Menla we thought was perfect. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. Um, I mean, I was looking at some of the retreats you've got coming up in October. There's Friends of Fungi, which I was like, okay, that's interesting. And, and there's some that get uh, rather interesting in psychedelic integration. There's Braving the Wilderness, Discover Your Soul's Power, um, The Four Winds. Now, this scene, I happen to really, really um, appreciate um, Robert Thurman, Bob Thurman. And I know he sometimes comes and does um, workshops there, too, doesn't he? Oh, yes. Uh, Bob teaches here pretty regularly, and um, but mostly online right now. We've been sort of slow to reintegrate into in-person retreats, mm-hmm. uh, although we're, st- we're starting to do that with the Vajra Yoga, and also next weekend Krishna Das will be doing his first in-person oh. appearance since the pandemic with Bob. And um, so, yeah, uh, Bob teaches sort of tirelessly, and is so generous with his time and his wisdom with so many different people, not just us. Uh, so we, we just love to team him up with different teachers. Mm. You mentioned the Four Winds. That's Alberto Valaldo's organization. They do sh- trainings in shamanism. And, uh, you know, we team them up for highly engaging, really thought-provoking and hilarious conversations, <laughs> well, both online and in person. Well, I, I hope most people probably know and have heard of Bob Thurman, but... Um, he is really one of the great treasures um, in the teachings, and um, so so he's done so much to actually bring about change um, and understanding in yes. um, of under, understanding not just Tibetan Buddhism but um, the inner self. And he and as you said, he has such a beautiful um, way of expressing himself that's very easy to understand, and and at, at times humorous. And he knows. So many, everyone, I mean, in the spiritual community knows him. So, yeah. so what an amazing resource um, to have yes. on that. You know, I mean, that, that's amazing to have that to call upon with this connection. Um, so, so when, at this time, because you mentioned COVID, are people able to come out and just stay if they're not part of a retreat? Or can they even come there yeah. now? Or how does it work? Great question. And we, we never really closed. Um, but... For the first couple of months, people were sort of terrified to go anywhere. But um, we ended up being a sanctuary for individuals and couples, little family units, even small groups of coworkers to escape from typically New York City, which is only a two-hour drive from here. And they came up and just booked rooms. We opened up our, our space sort of like hotel style for personal retreat. Group retreats ended overnight. We lost our business overnight. Mm -hmm. And uh, we found that there was a huge need, and people were coming, you know, fleeing uh, the the various breakouts, and there were protests and riots, and really were trying to serve a fairly traumatized public uh, in just opening our doors and having a a meaningful place for them to get away in a a sort of wellness-oriented vacation. So we call those create your own getaways and uh, we're we've been wanting to do those more for many years but have been sort of too booked by by group retreats so covid allowed us to open that part of our business and grow it and um, so now we're finding a nice balance between people coming for their personal create your own getaways and people coming for group retreats and then of course day visitors to our healing spa so so that's wonderful, too. So you could just go for the day if you wanted to go in for the day to the healing spa, or you can book as few as a night or two or, or as long as how long. If you want to stay for a week or two weeks, you can, can you book that? Yes. We even had people staying here for months. Wow. Uh, they would rent some of our private cabins with kitchens, and, um, and, and we had people here through the winter. We had people here through the spring. Uh, you know, not a ton of people were able to or interested in renting long term, but we have done that, and we do have a minimum two night stay typically. Mm-hmm. Um, but we, really, we feel it takes two days just to unwind yeah. from your normal reality. Mm-hmm. So 
we encourage people, if they have the means and the time, to try to come for at least three or four nights, and then you really get a much, much deeper experience. Um, I remember a long time ago, I went to Green Gulch and stayed there and did some meditation. Of course, that was a different kind of program, but of course, they had that beautiful, you probably heard of Green Gulch above San yes. Francisco, and they had their beautiful, beautiful um, organic uh, grown, uh, and of course you eat from their, their place as well. But but mm-hmm. that was different. It didn't have all the space, you know, that you would get. Right. Um, so when you go to rent a place, um, give me the cost that it would be involved for a normal person to rent, um, Say let's say, a, you know, a week, uh, you know, a couple of days versus a week, what the prices would be. Uh, well, it's very hard to say that um, mm-hmm. without having more detail. Okay. There are sort of different kinds of accommodations. Our, our nightly rates for individuals range from just under $200 a night up to uh, the 400s for a, a deluxe king suite with a private bathroom. Mm-hmm. And um, then, But people can also rent those houses, and then we typically have a minimum number of people to be able to book a house. Um, it also depends on the time of year. We, you know, mm-hmm. most people want to be here during the summer and the fall, yeah. and on the weekends. So those are our peak times. But we'll, you know, we'll work with people to make it possible for them if they're able to book midweek or in the sort of the quieter months. Uh-huh. So it really can vary quite a bit. And we also people come in camp, or we, you know, we have um, dorm housing as well for folks who are really on a tight budget. Um, we also work with people, individuals, to do uh, partial scholarships. So, and then, but then, you know, people don't understand how expensive a place like this is to actually run. And the the electric bills alone are enough to make you cry at the end well, of the day. Well, it's not only run; it's maintaining. When you're having something like that large to try to maintain and take care of things. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, I really can. Uh, and but so so if a person were to come and stay for a week and they wanted to, I mean, I, I imagine typically someone would like to at least once go to the spa. Do you have daily set up meditation classes at any place, or is that kind of done uh, by people on their own, or how does uh, is that included great. with it? Yeah, great question. Um, we have uh, tried doing weekly meditation and yoga classes and have found that it's uh, a bit difficult for us to pull off because we've been so retreat-focused mm-hmm. over the years. Um, we are going to be trying that again in light of the fact that more people are coming for their own personal getaways now. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, typically, if they want, uh, we do offer all kinds of different classes that people can sign up for either one-on-one or small group classes while they're mm-hmm. here through our spa. Um, and then, but then in you know the local area itself, Woodstock and the surrounding area has so many different yoga teachers and uh, meditation teachers. So even if we don't have a uh, daily class happening, there's there are classes within you know ten fifteen minute drive from here. Oh, really? That close? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. This, yeah. This area has been a beacon for artists and spiritual seekers for a very very long time, and uh, we're blessed in that respect to have some of the best massage practitioners um, I've ever encountered working here. And that's just a, a benefit of being in the area where we are. And the, and the Catskills itself is going through a big renaissance now with all the problems that happened in the city in the last year and a half. Yeah. People have sort of rediscovered the magic of the Catskills. And uh, so suddenly overnight we have, you know, the, our region is just crawling with people, especially on the weekends. And they're often coming for very similar reasons. You're, usually you're coming to get in touch with nature and you know, find good food, and there are various festivals and fairs, music events in the area. It's really kind of a, ha- a happening place. Yeah, it, it, it seems pretty amazing. Like I say, you never could have imagined 20 years ago how it has blossomed. And, and I have to say, I think what you quoted on prices was very fair compared to what you'd pay in a hotel in that area. Um, and it includes meals. That's so. amazing. That's no. That's great. That's very. That's. Right. I'm. I'm tempted to hop on a plane right now. Uh, <laughs> so. So tell me when the season changes here. Of course, you know I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> it's just like well, right. season changes means the ginger's blossoming, or you know. Or a little bit. <laughs> but um. But I mean, of course, um. You start to get different temperatures. So what is it like? 
Um, mm-hmm. Is it? Would you recommend for someone like say, okay, I've always wanted to write this book and I've got to go to a place where I want some peace and quiet and got to do it. Would you say wintertime might be an ideal time for someone who wants to rent a cabin and get away and not be bothered by the world? Absolutely. Winter here is so quiet and so still, and it's just amazing. It's amazing that not a lot of people want to experience it then. I think people just have this idea of winter just being sort of long and cold and dreary. But it's like a winter wonderland up here with a fresh coat of snow, with snow clinging to all the branches and all the trees, and it's just really something. So for for peace and quiet, we I mean we we specialize in that in the winter. Mm-hmm. Uh, my own personal favorite time of year is just right now and for the next month, mm. um, as the leaves start to change. It's truly a visual symphony. Uh, there are fewer bugs than there are in the springtime. Mm-hmm. Um, the air is usually kind of warmish in the day and cool at night, and um, the hiking is just. Uh, hard to resist at mm-hmm. this time of year. <laughs> I, I would imagine so. Um, and, and at this point, how far usually in advance do people need to make reservations to get up there and to uh, rent spaces? Is it, is it gets pretty crowded at this time of year? Um, it is. We are pretty full on the weekends. Um, but we typically, I mean, we haven't fully bounced back from COVID yet. Mm-hmm. So we're on our way. But we pretty much have availability most of the time. And, um, you know, people typically don't plan very far ahead, we've discovered, Mm. you know, more and more. Mm -hmm. Um, So people can feel free to call us last minute. Um, Obviously, you've got more choice if you book in advance. And um, we're happy to work with people to design a a, a retreat experience if they want content while they're here and not just a, a room and a... And a, and a nice set of meals. So, do you have we're, we're, certain boundaries, or uh, I don't say boundaries? That's not the right word. Do you have certain uh, precepts as far as um, trying to maintain the peace that people should follow when they're on these grounds? Because knowing that some people are on retreat, some people are doing things. Do you have a way of right. of, of of kind of respecting other people's boundaries and space? I'll I'll say around them um, while they're there. Yeah, I mean, I'd start out by saying that most people self-regulate pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, we, generally speaking, the people who come here are, are coming here for some type of inner growth experience, so they're already a little bit more attuned uh, to these kind of things. That said, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, yeah, sometimes we do have to talk to people. We do have mm-hmm. quiet hours from uh, from 10 p.m. until 8 in the morning. Good. And um, we don't allow hard alcohol. We don't serve alcohol. People can bring their own and um, and sort of you know drink discreetly in their rooms or with dinner. Um, but I think most people who come here really understand that it's a it's a nature resort and wellness mm-hmm. facility. So we I don't to... we don't tend to have a lot of partiers and loud <laughs> you know people. Thank God. I <laughs> I remember when I went to Green Gulch on the first night. I went to the dining room to eat, and I was trying to talk to people, and I'm going, well, no one's answering me. And then I <laughs> finally found out it's a silent meal. You do not talk when uh-huh. you're eating. It was like I was so <laughs> embarrassed. It's like I was trying to chat away. Um, but you know, it's good to, to kind of be aware of that as well. Um, I have to say, I think there's such a need. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, but have you had a chance to see or hear about Nine Perfect Strangers and Tranquilium? I have not. Oh, you have to watch that. It's the one that Nicole Kidman produced and, and did, but it's about a cool. retreat space. But it, 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 gets, no, it gets a little far out there. It's about people who have all these problems come to go to this very, very high-end retreat place. But, um, uh-huh. but then it's, it's interesting kind of how she, I don't want to be a spoiler on that one, but she kind of has a way of, um, facilitating their growth that they weren't quite aware of when she started. But but it's a beautiful space. I don't know where it was shot, but it's this huge retreat area that she runs So, uh, with spas and everything. I'll check it out. Yeah, you, yeah. It's called Nine Perfect Strangers. So you, get, you might laugh a lot because um, you might relate to some parts of it or not. But um, now you, let's, before we finish, let's talk a little bit about your online presence because that's a lot easier for me right now. Um, how do you participate in some of these um, wonderful classes you're having or retreats online? 
Sure. So um, people can go to our website, menla.org, and click on the Menla online um, section at the top, and that takes us to a page that um, has upcoming online programs, ongoing online programs, and our evergreen material from retreats that we have done in the last year and a half. And they can, uh, there are different, um, you know, pay scales. It's, uh, you know, really, especially with the online access, we, uh, you know, it, it doesn't, there's not all this tremendous overhead that there is in the, uh, you know, the, the sort of brick and mortar facility. So we can uh, really help people out if they have financial need. Um, we can even make it available for free or by donation. Um, and we found that uh, the people who have means are donating extra and, you know, to help, to help us continue to produce this material. But there's such a great range of teachings. And um, we've, we've started programming fewer online uh, events because we found that in the summer there was a pretty marked drop-off as people started rediscovering the outdoors and things sort of opened up before the Delta variant was, uh, you know, sort of prominently in the headlines. And so we're going to start uh, ramping up our online programs in the, more in the winter and the spring. We're focusing on larger conferences with, um, you know, a handful, a variety of really compelling teachers uh, tackling difficult subjects like, the, like death and dying, uh, we have a, an environmental conference we're putting together for next year that focuses on the third pole, which is uh, Tibet and surrounding regions and is, has more you know, ice and glacier mass than, uh, than almost the poles themselves, and it's, mm. it's melting at six times the rate. Wow. And it's completely underreported, and, mis- and, and, and you know, most people are not aware of the importance of the third pole. Mm. So that's a that's going to be a bigger uh, conference that focuses on social dimension, economic dimension, cultural, and environmental. Um, and uh, we'll be doing a, a divine feminine conference in the spring. So we're looking to, and you know, our our main um, offerings tend to be Buddhist, Tibetan Buddhist yoga, but we really are trying to broaden what we cover. Because um, you know the Tibet, the Tibetan culture and Tibetan teachings and Buddhist teachings can relate to any other uh, field, and it can be sort of a bridge. But we really these the problems that we face today are so great and so pressing that we need people to come from all different perspectives and really share wisdom and ask difficult questions and work together to learn more about um, other people's ways of doing things. I mean, it's such a uh, kind of a dream come true to be able to have a resource such as this available. And I was amazed when I got this, I don't know, it's a, I don't know about a month and a half ago, um, from email from Tibet House talking about it. And I had not heard of it before. Of course, I'm out here in Maui, but I, I mean, it's like, wow, I had no idea that this amazing place exists where you can go and retreat and you can also just stay and you can do walks and all this great food and healthy places and i thought how valuable this resource is right now for people um i and, agree i mean it's just a wonderful way to we talk about reset and reboot um i think almost all of society after the last 18 19 months of has to reset and reboot i mean it's like yeah. everyone's gone through some kind of traumatic experience through this last year so I mean, this is, a, I, I think, a very valuable um, place for everyone. I, I really, I'd love to get there, and I'm so, so very happy to find out about it um, and what you're doing. I think it's just invaluable and, and, and a great resource for people. And I do have to say, your prices compared to a lot of other places are, is very re- are very reasonable as well. Um, well thank you. We're not a luxury resort, and we're not pretending to be. You know, uh-huh. it's not about marble and yeah. fancy this and fancy that. It's really about substance, and um, you know, obviously, we want people to be comfortable while we're here. But we're really, we're shooting for authenticity and substance and depth and and a sort of genuineness of experience, rather than trying to wow people with 
uh, gorgeous facilities and that everything's manicured. This is a bit on the wild side. We mm -hmm. only have four or five people on our facilities crew who wow. have you know many buildings and many acres of uh, lawn and, and landscaping to deal with. Um, and, you know, we're just a humble nonprofit, yeah. and uh, we don't have a lot of extra. Admittedly, our marketing is not our strong suit, so we rely on word of mouth and uh, people discovering us through their own teachers or through Tibet House. And uh, over 20 years, the word really has gotten out, but, um, you know, we're not as well-known as we would like to be. Uh, we certainly could stand to be more busy in uh, certain times of year. And uh, we're just so happy every time somebody comes here and discovers us and they show up stressed out from life and travel and two, three, four, five, six days later, they don't want to leave. They've had <laughs> a really transformative experience. Uh -huh. They can't wait to tell their friends. And it just makes us feel that we really are doing uh, valuable work for um, a culture that's desperately in need of meaningful change and solutions. So well said. Uh, with all the ones that you're booking now, can people, I mean, some of these retreats that are online, are they not happening there? Are they held somewhere else, but just being facilitated through your site? Or I'm not quite sure when you have all these people listed, are they actually from there right. streaming or are they at other places streaming through your facility? Uh, it's a little c complicated to explain that. Um, it, many of the teachers that we've that we're working with, you know, are broadcasting from their own home, uh -huh. wherever in the world they live. Uh -huh. And um, Bob Thurman lives only 25 minutes from here, and he'll either broadcast from his uh, home studio, which is basically a corner of his office, um, or he comes out here and shoots from here, and then. Basically, from now on, any in-person retreats that we ourselves sponsor, we're also going to be offering hybrid options, and we're really doing everything we can with a very limited budget to make those more visually appealing than just uh, Zoom sort of s sessions on laptops, which uh -huh. is sort of the predominant mode through the thick of the shutdowns and pandemic. Um, so, for example, when Krishna Das is here this weekend with Bob, we're going to be broadcasting that live online for anyone who either can't make it or is too afraid or, um, you know, just wants to, to feel like they're in the room. And, and our goal can, is to make them feel that way. They just go to menlaw.org to find out how to sign into that or book it or, you know, it'd be a Yeah, point. it's, um, it's menlaw.org is our, is our master site. And then there's the Menla online section, which technically takes you to thus menla.org. Ah. That stands for Tibet House US Menla.org. Uh -huh. And that's where the catalog of various uh, courses can be found. And Wonderful. you mentioned the, uh, the psychedelics, and I just wanted to say that uh, we're not a place where people can come and do like an ayahuasca retreat, which is very, very yes. popular, especially in uh, Central and South America. Uh -huh. um, we, what we've been doing is focusing on um, therapists who are at the forefront of the psychedelic-assisted therapy movement, which is picking up from where they left off back in the 60s when the government shut it all down and have been making tremendous strides in dealing with um, depression, anxiety, trauma, PTSD, end-of-life, uh, you know, malaise. And so we've, uh, we're partnering with uh, people who are training therapists in how to administer these therapists. One day, when it's legal, we would like to be a place where people can have psychedelic-assisted therapy, but we're, it's, it's, right now it's not the kind of place where you can just come to have that experience. So just in Thank case, you. I didn't want to... No, no, I'm glad you clarified that. And again, I'll refer you and you'll laugh when you see uh, Nine Perfect Strangers because that's part of what they do there. <laughs> it's, I just, it's okay. funny. Uh, so, well, <laughs> so. <laughs> there'll, there'll be le less stranger after that experience, right. for sure. Uh, so, and the last thing is, do you do podcasts? Because obviously, you know, there's a streaming and it's easy to do a podcast, but have you uh, changed any of these into listening? experiences on podcast sure so um bob thurman.com uh bob has his podcast that he's been doing for several a few years now and um that's the portal to access our podcast and it's basically bob and people that he is really interested in and interviews or has uh, dialogues with wonderful 
Wonderful. Well, it's been a treat. Uh, I've just, I'm so excited about your place, and I know I'll get there. I'm not sure when, but um, I can't wait uh, to discover it. And it's just beautiful to know a place here like yours exists. And I have to thank you. I know there's a lot of work involved in running something like this, especially with your small staff. Um, so I know that it's, a, it's an act of service, and um, it's a beautiful service to provide for the world. And I recommend people checking it out because you have so much going on there at Menla, M-E-N-L-A dot org. And then you can also access the online and other things um, that you can sign up for anywhere in the world. And, and again, um, a big, big mahalo to you. Um, you know, people have talked on Maui about wanting a place like yours here for as long as I've been here, 30 years on Maui. And no one has uh-huh. been able to do it, you know. So uh, I think you set a standard for people to understand how it's, it can be done right. Thank you. It's certainly not easy, but it is a labor of love, and we're very happy to share what we do with anyone who can benefit. Also, uh, Tibet House U.S., our headquarters in the city, is um, doing a soft reopening uh, just now with an exhibit of Allen Ginsberg's photographs. Oh, oh my. Uh, He was a supporter of ours, used to do our benefit uh, concerts and was friends with Philip Glass and Robert Thurman. And uh, some of these, photo- these photos are just really wonderful. So we have a, a virtual exhibit for people who can't visit, and we're doing scheduled exhibits as we start to reopen. And we're praying, as long with the whole world, that next year we can really all kind yeah. of rebound and, and be more or less back on track. I, I agree. And I, 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 a deep bow of gratitude to you and your staff and the people there. Uh, and thank you for your generous uh, time in explaining and um, helping to share what you're doing there at Menla House. And a big aloha. Aloha. It's my pleasure, Cindy. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thank you very much. Aloha. Bye-bye. Bye.